and we're reading the whole Bible. And today is day 108. We're reading several Psalms, 17, 35, 54, and 63. Let's go. Today's Psalms are all Psalms of lament and outcries for deliverance as David is being harassed and pursued by Saul. One thing in all of these Psalms is we never leave it in despair or just like they're evil, destroy them. There's always a claim and an assertion of God's righteousness. And there's always a looking to the Lord. It's never just these people are evil and God, why aren't you here? And if you were really here, you would do something about this. It's I'm in trouble and then looking to the Lord and crying out to the Lord for deliverance and trusting in the Lord that that deliverance will come somehow or other. God will make things right, will vindicate the righteous, all of that. So Psalm 17 is laid out with an initial cry for vindication against the enemies um, and then a proclaimed innocence saying, they're evil. What did I do to deserve this? Please stand by me. Uh, a plea for protection, uh, a further description that the enemies are evil, and then a plea once again for Yahweh to come and confront the evil ones like, Lord, if you do this, I know that you will find my cause just and all of that. And then it concludes with, but I will see your face in righteousness. When I awake, I will be satisfied with your presence. Psalm 35 has sort of a three-stage repeated process of they're evil, I will rejoice. They're bad, I will rejoice. They're not good. When you deliver me, all people will rejoice. Those who seek my vindication, they will be able to praise you in that time. And there's something uh, right in the middle that's kind of neat. Um, in verse 17, 18, 19, uh, it says, Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue me from their ravages. Rescue my precious life from the young lions. I will praise you in the great assembly. I will exalt you among many people. Do not let my deceitful enemies rejoice over me. Do not let those who hate me without cause wink at me maliciously. And so it contrasts the, I'll praise you, Lord. And they are trying to mockingly rejoice in my destruction. So which would we rather have here? Right. And so it's kind of setting up this tension between two different kinds of rejoicing, one righteously praising the Lord and one just celebrating the destruction of the Lord's anointed. Whereas with the first two Psalms that we looked at, 17 and 35, they could have been written any time, but they definitely fit these times when David is running and fleeing and hiding from Saul. Right. Psalm 54 directly claims to be uh, from one of these times. First Samuel 26 from yesterday's reading says, uh, at the time when the Ziphites went and said to Saul, is David not hiding among us? And so this is what David wrote. And it's a short little Psalm, but it just, he cries out for vindication. He cries out for salvation from the Lord and he claims to sacrifice free will offerings. And so save me. I, I know that you will. I will offer praise and sacrifice to you when you do. Psalm 63, another one that is when he is in the wilderness of Judah, which is where he's at during that those last couple passages that we read in 1 Samuel. And this time he mostly is focused on connecting with the Lord here. He starts off with, God, you are my God. I eagerly seek you. I thirst for you. My body faints for you. He's expressing this desperate need for the presence of the Lord. You know, I will glorify you. I think about you all the time. And then it's not till the very end where he kind of presents the difficulty that's leading him to this kind of desperate desire for God's presence and deliverance. He says, but those who intend to destroy my life will go into the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the power of the sword. They will become a meal for jackals. But then he goes right back into praising God. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by him will boast for the mouths of liars will be shut. And so again, praising God for his righteous and just acts within this life and also these kind of considerations that God is above and beyond and eternally worthy of praise. And so as we read Psalms like this, again, I think it gives us permission to cry out to the Lord, no matter what our circumstances are, which is 
something incredible that when we are in trouble, we seek him for deliverance and we find refuge in him, regardless of whether or not the circumstances change. We trust and praise the Lord because he is good and worthy of it, whether or not it works out for us in this life. And especially knowing the future that is to come, that he is preparing a way and preparing a time when Christ will return, when a new heaven, a new earth will be established, when all things will be restored and we will be eternally in his presence presence. Knowing that that's our future, no matter what happens in this world, as Paul says, it's a temporary trouble. And so though we struggle for a short time, we look to the Lord, we seek and ask for deliverance now, just like David does here. And we also look forward to the glorious day when we will be united with Christ fully forever And that will be a great and glorious and wondrous day free of pain and suffering and everything else. And all of these requests and claims and desire for vindication, for righteous deliverance will be fulfilled. That's what stands out to me today. I would love to hear how you're reading this and what these speak to you. Let's talk about it in the chat. Keep reading this, keep praying through it and uh, seeking to just to draw nearer to the Lord in his word. Be rad for Jesus.